Good morning, Father Art from St. John in the Wilderness Church with you this morning. It is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, and I welcome you to our virtual church this morning. We're meeting this way uh, because, as you know, our nation and actually all the nations of the world are experiencing a health crisis. And so we are figuring out new ways of experiencing the church at St. John's, just like uh, many other congregations are. This morning, our worship experience is going to be out of the Book of Common Prayer. It's going to be, this is my cat, Molly. Um, it's going to be out of the daily devotion part of the prayer book. Uh, this part of the prayer book you may not be very familiar with. Um, it is after the morning prayer and noonday prayer, evening prayer compline. Those are called the daily offices. And then there's a short section called daily devotions for individuals and families. And that is what we're going to be using this morning because it's a shorter service and I have some announcements after our worship experience that I want to share with you. So if you do have a prayer book at home, I encourage you to follow along with us this morning. It begins on page 137 of the Book of Common Prayer. And I will be allowing for some time for prayer, uh, some silence as we go along so that you can, you can pray for the concerns that you have for yourself and your family, for those that you love and for all those around the world. So we'll pause right now and just wait for God's Spirit to fill our space. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving health again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today for the fourth Sunday of Lent is from the Gospel of St. John. It's the entire um, chapter uh, of nine, chapter 9 of the Gospel of St. John. As he walked along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he sat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, 
he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does, uh, does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In this Gospel today, it is uh, so interesting with a man that is born blind who's healed up by Jesus. Uh, healed in a way, certainly, that we would not heal, especially in the midst of, of the crisis that, that we are in the midst of right now, but healed nonetheless. And what's so interesting is when this man is healed, the disciples are wondering, um, who is at fault that the man is sick in the first place? And then after he is healed, the Pharisees are wondering, who should we give credit to? Um, they're concerned about who to blame or who to praise. And the man is sitting in the, in the middle. The man who was healed is sitting in the middle, um, just healed and wanting to praise God and to believe in Jesus. And belief in Jesus in the Gospel of John means to be in a relationship uh, with Jesus. And that's all the man wants to do is to be in a relationship with Jesus and eventually, I am sure, to follow him as, as a disciple, a, a, as a follower. When I think about the crisis that we're currently in, and as I watch the news reports, there's a whole lot of, of who's at fault and who should get the praise right now. A lot of pointing fingers and beating chests right now. And yet, I wonder if this is a time when we should just learn to trust Jesus and to trust and obey, to follow Jesus, to do the things of Jesus. 
and not worry about who's to blame, not worry about who's to praise, but just dive into the work that Jesus has given us to do. This is not the first pandemic that has hit humanity. Um, in the early centuries of the church, in the ancient Roman Empire, uh, the second and the third centuries, there were terrible pandemics that affected the Roman Empire. Uh, some estimates um, indicate that 25% of the people were lost in one of those pandemics. Terrible times. And yet, in the midst of those, when the church was very young, what the church did was, what Christians, what followers of Jesus did, is, and what made them so different than so many other people, is that they didn't run away. For some reason, they trusted. They dove into the work and they cared for each other, those who were other followers of Jesus, and they cared for those who weren't followers of Jesus at all. And during those pandemics, Christianity actually spread because people looked at the way the Christians behaved, the way they loved each other, the way they loved the world, the way they dove into the work of, of Jesus, uh, the work of God. And people looked at that and said, I want to be a part of a group like that. That's our opportunity right now. God did not cause this pandemic. I've had that question come via email and and even in face-to-face -face conversations that I've had with people over the course of the last three weeks. I do not think this, this is caused by God, but I do believe that we as followers of Christ are given an opportunity in this pandemic to dive in, to not run away, but to run toward and safely minister to the needs of God's world. We're beginning to do that in some very concrete ways at St. John's that I'll be talking about in just a few minutes. But what I would encourage you to do is to take a heart and follow the example of the man born blind, knowing that we have all been healed by Christ in our own ways, and to not run away, but to dive into the work of Christ at this time. The world needs people to get involved and to to love others at this time so may god bless you may god strengthen you and may god continue to inspire you fill you with the spirit that you may go forward in love to serve people in this very difficult and challenging time amen We'll continue with the um, with our daily devotion in the morning. Again, this is on page 137. And one of the prayers that I have been praying, it's out of our prayer book, and it's in the section for the ministration of the sick. One of the prayers that I have been using with various groups this week is a prayer that is on page 461 that I think is particularly appropriate as we wake up each morning. And maybe it would be one of those prayers that you could commit to memory uh, during this, this time of crisis. Let us pray. This is another day, O Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Together we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. One final prayer for the daily devotion. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So thank you if you are following along with us this morning. Thank you for being part of this very short worship service. Hopefully you got something out of the gospel reading um, and my brief meditation on it. Hopefully you'll be inspired to do the, the work of Christ right now and reach out to your family and to your neighbors. Um, it is a, an unprecedented, unprecedented time, at least for me in my, in my life. And um, it's an opportunity for us truly to be the heart and the hands of Christ in our community. Already we're, we're doing some of, some of those things and I wanna tell you about in the last week what we've put together at St. John's. Um, in response to the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic that we're experiencing. First is you should have uh, received a telephone call from what we're calling the St. John's Shepherds. I asked the vestry members and the, some of the staff members to um, divide up our directory, our parish directory, and to give everybody a call just to check in with them, um, either to give a call or an email just to make sure that everybody's doing okay and see if we can help in any sort of way. Um, they will, the, the St. John Shepherds will continue to reach out uh, to you during this time. And if you need anything, you can connect with them. And of course, you can call me directly as well or the church office. So we encourage you to do that. But the St. John Shepherds, through this whole crisis, they will, they will um, be touching base uh, with our folks. So that's one of the big things uh, that we've done. The second thing we've done is we've put into place um, a pastoral response team. This is the team that is trying to address the needs that we have as a parish, um, as the parishioners are running into, but also the needs of our community. One of the first initiatives of the pastoral response team is to help folks who either cannot or should not be getting out of their homes to go get groceries or other supplies. We're calling out them the, the St. John's Grocery Getters. And it's a very simple system. You can either work through your St. John Shepherd or you can call us directly. Uh, we'll hook you up with, um, with Carrie Thomas, who is usually our, our youth and young adult minister, but she's um, being the dispatcher. And she will connect you with somebody who can get out uh, to a grocery store and safely obtain the things that you need and get them to you. Um, so know that that's out there. There are some of our elderly members at St. John's that really should not be leaving their homes. And I know you're fiercely independent and many of you think you'll do it yourselves and of course you're able to do that. Um, but really you should not be doing that and we should have other people who are out there doing that and St. John's has a way for us to do that. So uh, give us a call and we'll hook you up with one of the grocery getters. The St. John Shepherds will also be uh, connecting with you again relatively shortly, sometime this week, just with a checklist um, of, of questions that, you, that, you might, that might be going on like our um, are your neighbors okay? Or should we be touching base with any of your neighbors who might not have a parish family that is checking in with them? Or are, are you and your, both you and your pets, are your pets okay as well? Or can we go and um, get uh, pet supplies? Um, so there are a number of things, a number of questions that we'll be giving you um, on the, uh, this checklist. Um, so be looking for that. Um, in your email box or um, by telephone. A second team that we put together is a media response team. That's what we're calling it. And, and um, that team basically, we're, we're having to figure out how to get the word out about how we're connecting still as a church. And obviously 
most of my ministry prior to this was face-to-face, -face, seeing people at church or in your homes, um, around in the community. Um, I, like you, I'm, I'm in my home with my cats and my boys uh, now. So we're having to figure out other ways to connect. And so we're exploring a lot of different media options. And I'll tell you a few of the things that we're going to have in place this week, and probably we're going to be adding to that in weeks to come. Uh, but we want to start small and make sure that what we do um, initially we, we can do well. So um, you're going to be seeing some of those, and I'll tell you about some of those in just a, a minute. The third team that we're putting into place is an organiz organizational response team. And the organizational response team is a group of folks who are just figuring out how do all the pieces fit together? How does the communication piece and uh, the outreach piece, the inreach piece, how do all those things fit together now in this very strange circumstance that we're finding ourselves? And the organizational response team will make some recommend <coughs> excuse me, will make some recommendations to uh, the vestry. Um, but they're, they're folks who are experienced in, in educational settings and corporate settings and um, in church settings as well. And uh, we're going to get together and figure out how to do this well, make sure all the, the pieces fit together. So some odds and ends that I want to communicate to you as well. The first is that uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about Holy Week and Easter. Uh, quite honestly, I do not see any way that we're going to be able to have Holy Week or Easter in our building at St. John in the Wilderness. I know that comes as a huge disappointment to you. It does to me as well. In my all my years of being an Episcopalian, let alone being an Episcopal priest, I've never um, not had Holy Week in a church with a community, um, receiving the sacraments um, in the ways that we normally receive them. So it's a new thing for me as well. And so we're figuring out, <coughs> excuse me, figuring out some ways to do that, um, but we will not be having it in the church. So if you are on the altar guild or if you're one of the vergers or had some other responsibilities uh, during Holy Week, um, we will not be doing that. Um, so some of the things that we will be doing, opportunities to connect. Um, starting this week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 12 o'clock at noon on Facebook. There'll be a, a midday meditation uh, from me. And um, it's it, it'll be a pre-recorded thing, but it's going to be at noon on each of those days. And it's just a way that I can touch base with you. And um, some days will be just a, a meditation. Other days will be, this is what my life looks like in the midst of, of, um, of uh, the, the situation. Um, so uh, check that out on our Facebook page every Tuesday, Thursday, um, and Saturday. Um, on Sundays, um, next Sunday at 8 o'clock, we'll be also doing another service. It'll probably be a more extensive service than this simple daily devotion that we did today. So that'll be at 8 o'clock. We're looking at some opportunities to, um, to uh, connect so that you guys can actually uh, meet with each other. We've been working uh, with Google um, Google Meet, which is a way, it's like Zoom, if you've ever used Zoom or Google Meet, it's a way that we can meet via the internet and um, actually have a meeting. So we're trying to um, come up with some ways where we can actually experience some fellowship. Um, Carrie Thomas, in one of my meetings uh, yesterday, um, mentioned that at this time, it's not so much that we're social distancing, it's we're physically distancing. But there are ways that we can um, be a community together still uh, using technology. And that's, that's what we're going to be doing. And we, we can explain that. We will do our best to get you guys to connect with that. And um, we're hopefully going to be doing some Bible studies 
uh, via uh, Google Meet as well. So we'll be announcing that. So, um, so I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're healthy, and I hope you're behaving yourselves and staying inside and not touching your face and keeping six feet away from folks. Uh, we've had some beautiful days. Hopefully you've gotten some walks, some safe walks out there. And um, God is with us through the midst of this. I, all of you know that. And folks at St. John's, I can't tell you how many folks at St. John's have stepped up to the plate and, and want to serve at this time. So truly the church is coming alive uh, in unexpected ways. Um, before this whole thing began, a lot of us in the church have been struggling with what's the relevance of church at this time. And, and maybe through this, one of the things that we as well as our world will come to realize is that the church has great relevance in our world because we aren't going to be folks who run away. We're going to be folks who run toward and folks who love in the midst of the crisis. So stay safe. <coughs> Know that we are praying for you and, um, and do your best to love your neighbor and your families and yourself uh, during these, these days of the, corona, of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. God bless you today and always. Bye-bye. <clears throat>